What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be going over the Druid PTR patch notes that they just released here on the Diablo 4 website and there are a lot of great changes and some changes that I'm not too sure about but I will hold my strong opinions until after the PTR and we get the official patch notes for season 5. So to kick things off here at the top of the video, I did want to go ahead and mention two things that I'm pretty excited about going into the Season 5 PTR. And the very first one is something I know a lot of players have been asking for, including myself, and that is the rework to the Shepherds aspect. So going into the Season 5 PTR as well as Season 5, the Shepherds aspect will now give us companion skill damage instead of what it currently gives us in Season 4, which is the Core and Wrath skill damage. Now what this does for the Druid class going into Season 5 is that it's going to free up several skill and aspect slots to allow us Druid players to be a lot more dynamic with the builds we decide to create. Then for the second thing I did want to go ahead and mention, even though it is quite a bit smaller in terms of its overall impact on the Druid class, is that they are now allowing Druids to use one-hand swords. So if you didn't know, the Druid class has a ton of built-in critical strike damage multipliers, and one-hand swords actually give us critical strike damage as an innate passive. And even though this is a small amount of critical strike damage, it is still a lot better than the bonuses that you get from the one-hand axe or the one-hand mace. Plus, I always thought it would look really cool running around with a sword and totem anyway. But now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the patch notes. And we're going to start off here with the Worldly Finesse Offensive Tempering that is coming to all classes. And this tempering is going to be giving us Critical Strike Damage, Vulnerable Damage, Overpower Damage, and Ultimate Damage at unknown values. And obviously it sounds really good. The Druid has multiple Critical Strike Damage multipliers. And we also have Pulverize, which uses Overpower. So we're definitely going to be getting some benefit out of this tempering. And I'll probably be running this on a few of my slots in Season five moving down to the druid unique item we're getting a unique set of gloves called bjorn fang's tusks and what this reads out is that cataclysm is now guaranteed to strike anything in range and you deal 40 to 80 percent multiplicative increased damage for the duration of the effect while cataclysm is active you gain unlimited spirit now on its face these pair of gloves sound pretty great this 40 to 80 percent multiplicative increased damage sounds incredibly good however cataclysm has been a historically bad ultimate and i will hold my strong opinion on this specific unique until i have the opportunity to test it out on the ptr but like i said it looks like it has promise However, I will say this, it is quite unfortunate that we are getting yet another unique for a skill that is pretty bad just to make that skill actually decent. And my hope is in the future that they just go ahead and make skills good and then add uniques on top of them that make them that much better. Then moving down to our brand new legendary aspect is called the aspect of the rushing winds and it is a mobility aspect. And it says, casting a companion skill grants five to 15% movement speed for five seconds up to 15 to 45%. So this actually sounds pretty awful. I don't think anybody is going to be using this. There are just far too many ways to build out mobility on our characters that using an aspect slot to give us a very mediocre amount of movement speed just does not seem like a good choice in my opinion. So not really too excited for this one. Then down to our temperings, we're getting the ultimate efficiency resource tempering. And what this does is give us cataclysm cooldown reduction lacerate cooldown reduction, petrify cooldown reduction, and then grizzly rage cooldown reduction. So pretty nice tempering recipe overall. I'm definitely happy to see more resource temperings and getting cooldown reduction on our ultimate skills is always going to be good considering that we are going to have a lot more open slots on our skill bar now that Shepherds is not going to be polluting our skill bar with all three companion skills. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the video, and that is the class balancing changes. And the very first thing we see here is that they are now adding clarity affix ranks to our amulets. Now I will say that clarity is a bit of a clunky passive that is not really too great, especially now that they're going to be removing the shepherds aspect from our builds. I highly doubt that many people are going to want to run companions at all. So that is pretty much going to make this passive go unused, uh, probably for pretty much all builds out there. However, I will say that there still might be a place for players who want to play Pulverize as well as possibly those players out there who want to play Hurricane. But overall, in my opinion, this is just another affix that makes it far more harder to roll cooldown on our amulets. Now on to the skills. And as they said in the campfire chat, all of our skills are going to be getting a buff. So for landslide, it says that damage per hit of landslide increased from 37.5 now to 70%. 
damage area increased from 1.5 to 2, doubled the amount of pillars, and total damage increased from 70% to 280%. So that's a pretty hefty damage bonus, and the one thing that I'm most happy about is the damage area increase as well as the doubling the amount of pillars you get on your base landslide cast. That was definitely a much needed change. So I do expect landslide with some of the other changes mentioned here in these patch notes to actually be a pretty powerful build for the Druid class going into season five. Then on to shred, we're seeing the first attack damage buff from 28 to 52%. The second attack damage buffed from 39 to 72%. And then the very last attack damage buffed from 77 to 143%. Now this is actually a pretty interesting change when coupled with a change that I'm going to mention later in the video, but overall pretty happy that they went ahead and buffed up the damage with Shred. It definitely needs a lot of love and I hope they continue to improve the skill and I hope eventually they rework the Waxing Gibbous because it's actually a pretty cool looking unique item that in my opinion needs a lot more kick to it and needs to actually affect the Shred ability in a different way and also some of those affixes need to be changed as well. They're pretty bad. Moving down to Pulverize, the damage is being buffed from 50 to 92.5%. Now, the recent patch actually saw Pulverize get buffed pretty considerably, so we're also going to be getting a damage buff again here. Now, do remember that all these damage buffs are to replace the Shepherd's Aspect, so it might look like a lot, but it's actually replacing something that gave us quite a bit here. So we're going to have to do a lot of testing on all of these skills to see if this overall increase is good or if we need a much bigger one. Then for Tornado, we're seeing the damage buff from 35 to 65%. For Lightning Storm, we're seeing the damage buff from 40 to 74%. And actually, there's a bigger change to Lightning Storm that I'm going to mention later on in the video. Then again, we're seeing Hurricane buff from 187% to a whopping 346% damage. Now, I'm not sure, again, who wants to play a Hurricane build, but I'm sure there are some players out there. But I did want to go ahead and mention something. There's no Boulder here. There's no Rabies here and there's no trample here. So three wrath skills that are not seeing substantial damage buffs, one of them being boulder, which is a wrath skill that is coupled with the Dolman Stone amulet to create boulder cane builds. So it is quite unfortunate, but I do suspect that it was a bit of an oversight and we will probably be seeing some boulder damage buffs either before the PTR or after the PTR. Then on to our companion skills, it says that Ravens and Poison Creeper can now be cast while moving. Now, obviously I think Ravens needs a massive rework and I am surprised that I did not see a damage buff here. And the same could probably be said for Poison Creeper, even though it is a bit more effective than Ravens. But I will say that giving us the ability to now cast the skill on the move is actually a pretty substantial change. So typically you have to stand there for a second, cast your skill. It can be pretty interruptive towards the overall flow of your combat so just making this small change is going to make the overall feel of casting your companion skills a lot better and like i said this could potentially be the very first season that we see a companion skill build at the very top of the druid build tier list so this is definitely a nice change and one that will be pretty welcome for those companion build players like myself Moving down to the Lacerate Ultimate skill, it says the damage area increase from 1 to 2, and that casting Lacerate now teleports you to a target instead of starting at the caster. Now, I for one have never really used the Lacerate Ultimate, and it has always been pretty bad in my opinion. However, this does sound like some pretty nice changes coming to the Ultimate. However, like I said, I haven't played it, so I don't know if this is actually going to make it a worthwhile Ultimate skill that you might choose over the top of Cataclysm, Grizzly Rage, or Petrify. Then on to Cataclysm, it says the Lightning Strike rate is now doubled. Now, I don't think this is actually a big enough change to the ultimate skill. When you cast that ultimate skill, your Tornadoes and Lightning Storms just go all over the place, and they rarely hit the target that you want them to even if it's the only target in the room. And again, I do think that they're adding the unique item just to make the skill useful, which in my opinion is not the way to go. You're just polluting our aspect slots with unique items that we really shouldn't have to run just to make specific skills good, which ultimately will lead us not to picking them if it does take away too much from the builds we choose to run. Now down to Grizzly Rage, and this one's actually, in my opinion, seeing a pretty big nerf overall. And that's actually quite shocking to me considering that no one really runs this ultimate skill anymore because they've nerfed it into the ground already. And the changes that I'm going to read out make it even worse in my opinion. So it says that 
cooldown on this ability now starts after Grizzly Rage ends. So this is the big nerf here, in my opinion. Right now, you can pretty much stack out your Grizzly Rage duration as well as getting some cooldown affixes and make it where you can run the Dire Bear 100% of the time. And what this is actually going to do is force you into the cooldown because currently when you cast your Grizzly Rage, it goes on cooldown even though you're currently in your Dire Bear form. And now they're actually going to force you into the cooldown, making it mandatory that you actually stack out your cooldown and you'll still not be able to get this on a 100% uptime. So previously it says shape shift into Dire Bear for 10 seconds, gaining a 20% multiplicative damage bonus and a 20% damage reduction. Damage bonus is increased by 3% each second while in this form. Kills extend the duration by one second up to an additional five seconds. And now what it says is shape shift into a Dire Wear Bear for 10 seconds, gaining 30% multiplicative damage bonus and a 20% damage reduction. Damage bonus is increased by 3% each second while in this form up to a maximum of 75%. And the reason why they capped it here is because of this next sentence. And it says that kills extend the duration by one second, but the duration cannot go above 10 seconds. So what this means is basically that there's the potential for you to have a 100% uptime on your Grizzly Rage while you're clearing enemies. However, the problem is, is that the majority of in-game content actually has to do with bossing and what you're going to find is that when you get to the bosses you're going to have to go through the cooldown of your grizzly rage quite often because you'll never get it above 10 seconds so it's always going to run 10 seconds and then go on cooldown and then you'll be forced into going through that entire cooldown if you do not have several things implemented into your build that will cool it down faster. Now, previously, like I said, you could stack up cooldown as well as Grizzly Rage duration, and that cooldown will be mitigated because you will spend a substantial amount of time in Grizzly Rage, which will allow the actual skill to cool down before you come out of your dire form, and then you can just recast it once you pop out of your dire form. And unfortunately, now you're actually going to be stuck in your regular Werebear form for at least a small period of time until you have the ability to recast your ultimate. So in my opinion, a pretty strong nerf here. And I hope that we can get them to reverse this change here because if they do, this actually becomes a lot more valuable. But with this change, I think it is overall a pretty strong nerf to the Grizzly Rage ultimate ability, which, which was already pretty underwhelming overall. Going down, we are seeing a massive nerf to debilitating roar, so the damage reduction is now being decreased from 70 down to 40, so a pretty hefty nerf there, and even though they are going to be buffing up other things in the class, I don't know why they decided to do this. This was one of our best defensive skills, and now it will probably still be pretty good, but definitely nowhere near what it is currently. Moving on to Earth and Bulwark, this one's seeing a buff. However, in my opinion, this one is actually an oversight going into Season 4, and you'll understand why when I read out the previous version. So the previous version says, Rocks surround you for 3 seconds, granting you a barrier that absorbs 45% of your base life here. So base life. And then now it says, Rocks surround you for 3 seconds, granting you a barrier that absorbs 45% of your maximum life, right? So this is something I think was actually an oversight going into Season 4, because we can stack up so much max life that actually having a skill that scales off of base life is absolutely useless. And you know this if you use Barrier in Season 4, because what happens is, if you cast Barrier, you immediately get it stripped off of you by just about any damage dealt to your character. So again, I think this was an oversight going going into season four and they definitely had to make this change or else Earthenborg was absolutely unusable as a defensive skill. Now something else that's worth mentioning here is that with this change to Earthenborg as well as this pretty massive nerf to debilitating roar this actually puts Earthenborg back at the top of our defensive skills and there's something else that I want to mention here that is pretty important with Earth and Bulwark. So one of the biggest changes they made into Season 4 was the change that they made to the aspect of Mending Stone and this went largely overlooked because of the fact that Earth and Bulwark was scaling off of base life but what they did here is they allowed the player to use any skill at all to kill an enemy and when killing that enemy it would then replenish your active earthen bulwark barrier 
So with these changes to Max Life, as well as the changes they made to the aspect of Mending Stone in Season 4, there is the potential here to have Infinite Barrier up on your Druid at all times. And when you couple this with the Barrier Generation temperings you can get on your gear pieces, you could possibly have a barrier that doubles your effective HP pool on a very low cooldown that you can actually regenerate just by killing enemies. So a pretty powerful defensive skill and one that I think will be the key defensive skill for the Druid class going into Season 5. Moving down, we see that Cyclone Armor is getting a non-physical damage reduction increase from 10% to 15%. Now, in my opinion, this skill is still absolutely trash. However, it is phenomenal for reducing our non-physical damage reduction. And it basically just sits passively on our bar, never really being used. And honestly, I hope at some point in time, they lower the cooldown dramatically to the active skill and potentially add a key passive to this skill that will allow the player to actually pull enemies to them instead of pushing them back. Now, moving on to our passives, the one that was previously mentioned, the Shepherd's Aspect. So previous cool and wrath skills deal an additional 20% damage for each companion you have. And this is actually the two-handed version, and this is actually a 20% multiplier. And now it is going to give companion skills the 10% but 20% on a two-hander multiplier for each companion you have. So again, guys, companion builds are probably going to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest Druid build going into Season 5, if a lot of these changes stay the way they currently are. Moving down to the Skinwalker previous, when you use shapeshifting skill that changes your form, you gain two to five life. If you are at full life, you gain the same amount as fortify. Now, when you use a shapeshifting skill that changes your form, you gain five to 20% life. If you are at full life, gain the same amount as fortify. Now, this is a passive that really no one uses. However, I will say that this five to 20% life gain is actually pretty substantial. But the only problem with this is, is when you get to the end game, most people are dying from one one shot mechanics. So anything that heals you doesn't really do that much. You're, you're typically looking for some form of damage reduction or maybe even something that gives you a barrier to increase your effective health pool so that way you can tank through those one shot mechanics. Then on to Aftershock, it says the delay from the second set of landslides has been slightly decreased. Then on to Lupine Furiosity, and this one is a key passive for the Druid class, and what they're doing here is buffing it a little bit. So it says that reduce the amount of hits from six to three to benefit from the effect. And this is actually a pretty interesting buff here, and one that might actually benefit a very specific core skill, and that is going to be Shred. So looking at Shred one more time, it says the third attack damage buff from 77 to 143%. So like I said, a pretty substantial buff for Shred, more specifically the third attack, and then Lupine Furiosity being basically cut in half to function off of every third attack of your werewolf skill means that you're going to see a pretty strong third attack when coupled with the Shred core skill. Now you're probably asking yourself, what exactly does Lupine Ferocity do? And that's because no one even uses this key passive because it's absolute trash right now, much like most of the Druid key passives. Now what Lupine Ferocity does is that every sixth, which will now be third werewolf skill, hit critically strikes and deals 70% multiplicative increased damage. And this is further increased to 140% multiplicative increased damage against injured enemies. So if you can imagine running Lupine Ferocity with a Shred core skill build, every time you hit with that third attack on Shred, you're going to be doing a massive amount of damage with this key passive. And furthermore, once you get that enemy into injured territory, you're going to be doing some massive damage that is going to make it very easy for you to finish off those high tier bosses. Now, even though this sounds really interesting to try, I still think there might be some significant problems with the amount of damage Shred can actually do by itself. So I will be testing this out on the PTR and giving you guys my feedback once I get that opportunity. Then on to Vigilance, the damage reduction has been increased from each skill rank from 5 to 7%, which basically turns this into a whopping 21% damage reduction when you use a defensive skill. So like I said, they nerfed out Debilitating Roar, but they put a lot of that damage reduction into a lot of our passives. Then Iron Fur is getting a damage reduction increase from 3, now 4%, so 12% at 3 points. 
And then heightened senses is also seeing a buff from 2 to 3%. So now you will get up to 9% for three skill points. And when you use a werewolf ability as well, that is then going to be doubled to a whopping 18% at three points. And if you can imagine, if you decide to run height and senses on your amulet, as well as a quick shift ring, you could be looking at a pretty hefty damage reduction bonus. So I'm not really sure if this one will get passed into the official season five patch notes, but do be aware that there's the potential for you to stack out an obscene amount of damage reduction on the Druid class. Then on to the legendary aspects, the metamorphic stone aspect no longer removes the wrath skill tag from Boulder. And this is actually a pretty nice change because the Dolman Stone amulet gives ranks to wrath skills, which the Boulder skill would absolutely miss out on because they would take that wrath skill tag designator away. Now, again, I did want to mention that in the above patch notes, we've seen no damage increase for Boulder. So unless we get a similar damage increase to Boulder, it's not really going to matter because our Boulders are going to hit incredibly low amounts of damage and no one is going to be using a border cane build. Then onto our Paragon board, and this is something I did not see coming, but this is across the board for all classes, and that is the Thunderstruck Legendary Node is going to be capped down to 40%. So just like our Earth and Devastation node, now our Thunderstruck node has a cap on it of 40%. Now, unfortunately, I think this is a pretty massive nerf to the class overall, and it is something I am quite worried about because not only are we losing the Shepherds aspect, which I am very happy about, but now our Storm skills are going to be losing a massive amount of multiplicative damage. And I just don't think that a lot of the above mentioned damage Damage buffs are going to be enough to actually make up for the amount of multiplicative damage we're losing from the Thunderstruck node. So given the fact that we are going to be seeing this pretty massive nerf to our class, I do think that ultimately we will probably need to see more damage buffs to our core and rascals to make up for such a large damage loss. Now, ordinarily, I'd be pretty happy with capping out the Thunderstruck legendary node because in my opinion, I don't think there should be any legendary nodes that are infinitely stacking because because obviously that can get quite out of hand quite quickly. However, given the fact that we are in Barblo season three and potentially going into Barblo season four, where Barbarian is hitting 10 times the amount of damage that any Druid build could potentially hit, I do find it a bit weird that they are going ahead with this cap. However, I will say again, it is a PTR and nothing is set in stone. I've been right in the past, but I am willing to be wrong in the future. So we will see what happens, but overall, I think this is a good change for the class, even though I do think it is coming at a time when we could probably use that uncapped Thunderstruck node, and even an uncapped Earth and Devastation node to go along with it. Moving down to our Human Glyph, it is getting a bonus to the damage scaling as well as a bonus to the damage reduction. The Protector Glyph is seeing the same increase to the damage reduction here, which again, I don't know why we're getting so much damage reduction. The Werebear Glyph, again, getting a bonus to the additive damage scaling as well as a bonus to the damage reduction. And then the Werewolf Glyph only seeing a bonus to the damage reduction and not the damage bonus scaling here. And then last but certainly not least, down here nuzzled into the Druid Bug Fixes. It says, fixed an issue where Lightning Storm didn't scale with passive and temporary attack speed. So it was my understanding that that is how Lightning Storm was to function, that channeling abilities did not get a benefit from attack speed, but apparently it was a bug all along. So now Lightning Storm is actually going to be benefiting from our attack speed and in my opinion, this is a massive buff to Lightning Storm, or I should just say a massive fix to Lightning Storm, basically making this core skill far more effective than it previously was. So like I said, I thought this was how channeling abilities were supposed to work, but apparently it was a bug all along and Lightning Storm will now be scaling with your attack speed. So overall, I think that this is going to be a pretty big shakeup for the class, which I am very happy about. Definitely happy to see Shepherds getting out of the way of build creativity for the Druid class and happy that they're actually addressing the core problem with the Druid class. And that is the fact that pretty much all of our skills needed a massive damage buff. So that way we could keep up with the meta and not be forced to run companions on every single skill slot. Now, like I said, I am a bit worried with the nerf to the Thunderstruck node that that overall damage loss might be a little bit too much. 
but thankfully this is a PTR, so I am going to make my voice heard, and I hope you guys will make your voices heard about what you think needs to be changed before we get the official patch notes for Season 5. This is going to be a pretty crucial season for the class, because after this we're getting the expansion in a brand new class coming to the game, so I do hope that we can get everything squared away, so that way the Druid is just not tucked away into a dark place where no one actually wants to go because the class is in such disrepair. Now I do want to mention that with these changes I do expect to see a pretty strong meta evolve around some of our ultimate skills like Petrify and possibly even going back to the Season 0 Rampaging Werebeast builds because we'll no longer be shackled with our aspects needing to have Shepherds as well as Stampede. So with the addition of some of the Critical Strike Damage Temperings as well as the One Hand Sword that we're going to be getting, that big Critical Strike Damage Multiplier you get from Rampaging Werebeast actually sounds pretty good. But like I said, my only issue is that you're going to be forced into a cooldown when using Dire Wolf or Dire Werebear. And hopefully they can go ahead and switch that back because if they do, that is going to make the Grizzly Rage Ultimate a lot better with the changes that they've actually made to it. But if they don't, you're going to find yourself sitting with a pretty hefty cooldown every time you go up against a pretty tough boss. But anyways, guys, that is all for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Let me know what you guys are most excited for. And even maybe let me in on some of the ideas that you have for builds you want to try out on the PTR. Now I will be pretty busy during the PTR, but hopefully I will at least get a few days out of it to actually stream and enjoy some time with you guys. But nevertheless, I will be grinding it out and doing my very best to test as much as I can before the week is over. I also plan on possibly making a few early build planners to get those out to you guys so you can try out some of the ideas that I have. And I will be making my pre and post PTR feedback video of all the changes that I Hope will come to the Druid class going into Season 5 and potentially into Season 6. But with all that being said, I hope you guys are having a great day or a great night depending on wherever you're from. And peace out, guys. I will see you in the next one.